uh, Representative Benson, I'd like to follow up uh, on your uh, description of the IDs and how they're created. And uh, specifically, I wonder if you could provide us with any information about what kind of security features these laminated uh, pieces of paper have. Representative Benson. Security features in terms of uh, when they're made and when they're bound together in the laminating process? Representative Winkler. Well, Mr. Chair, Representative Benson, I guess I'm thinking of a comparison to a state ID that has uh, holograms on it. There's a barcode in the back that can be used to uh, check information. There's a magnetic hard swipe. There's more to a, to a state driver's license than just a, a, a picture and uh, so on. And I, I guess what I'm wondering is um, what mechanism do you have to prevent somebody from just creating their own in their own uh, dorm room or their own uh, nursing home room? Representative Benson. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, I, I think there's already cottage industry to, to duplicate, even though it might be more difficult, driver's license. Um, so, you know, I've, I've testified to it already that if there's a will and there's a criminal mind for it, there's probably a way. Um, Unfortunately, um, so uh, you know, in, in as much as is it absolutely foolproof, uh, it it is absolutely uh, not absolutely foolproof, but it is a first step in making sure that people who present themselves to vote on election day are who they say they are. Mr. Chair, Representative uh, Winkler, Representative Benson, and I, I you know, just want to make sure we're very clear. Uh, your bill does not require any kind of photo identification for an absentee ballot. Um, so if somebody were interested in uh, impersonating another voter and they didn't want to go to the polls, they could just use the absentee process instead. Is that correct? Representative Benson. They would have to have somebody witness and uh, the, the absentee process does not change in this bill at all. Mr. Ch Representative Winkler. Well, Mr. Chair, I guess Representative Benson, I don't really know what your bill accomplishes for the purposes of voter integrity. Uh, or voting security, uh, if you, uh, it's important to remember that when you go into the polling place and you sign on the line that says, I am who I say I am, if you're, if you're misre misrepresenting yourself, uh, if you're not that person, you've committed a felony. And we do have uh, post-election audits to determine whether or not people are who they say they were on election day. And you can detect those um, <coughs> Uh, irregularities, especially with felon voting. So you have, under your scenario, under your bill, you have someone who is willing to commit a felony in order to perpetrate voting, voter fraud, um, but, you, but your bill would protect against a person who is willing to commit a felony and sign on the line to say that they are somebody that they were not, but that same person wouldn't be sufficiently motivated to fill out an, uh, an absentee ballot. They wouldn't be sufficiently motivated to get a fake ID. Uh, they wouldn't be sufficiently motivated to get somebody to vouch for them for a birth certificate. I don't really know who, I mean, what kind of criminal mastermind you have in mind here um, who, would, who would commit a felony but wouldn't uh, take any of these other very easy sidesteps around this photo ID requirement. So I don't really understand uh, by watering down your bill this way what you've really accomplished um, by doing it. And I, I'm afraid that that creates a significant constitutional uh, problem for you because under the constitutional test there are two things that have to be met. First, there has to be a problem and second, what your, your solution to the problem actually has to accomplish the goal or, or which is to solve the problem. Uh, and we've, we've heard a lot of discussion about Indiana and uh, Representative Simon mentioned this and, and Representative Downey might remember if he worked on their, their statewide voter registration system. They had huge problems in Indiana with their uh, registration system. They're, they had, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of dead people on their voting rolls. Still, they had a significant record of problems with with the voting integrity in Indiana. You have no record of that in Minnesota. You have no basis other than fear and some fear mongering by outside organizations about the um, about the uh, um, integrity of Minnesota elections. You have no record to support it. And then the mechanism that you've created through this photo ID bill to correct this non-existent problem really doesn't do anything. The only thing it does is make it hard for some people to vote on election day, make them come back to the county auditor the, within five days and say, I didn't have an ID. 
it, the only thing that I can see that this bill does is turn away people from the polls. And while everybody might be able to fill out a provisional ballot, not everybody gets that ballot counted, and that's the only thing that really matters. Representative Benson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, there wasn't a question in there. It was a lot of statement. But first of all, it is constitutional. And second, uh, provisional ballots, there are absentee ballots. There are already uh, statutes re requiring or um, uh, outlining who, who is eligible to take one. And they're far easier to detect if there's fraud with an absentee ballot um, uh, simply because you can go to that person and, and because they have to not be able to be, make it to the, the poll. So it's not as hard to find out if someone who uh, is actually committing fraud as it might appear by your statement. Representative Kahn. She's gone. Representative Green. Thank you. Um, as some of you know, I'm sorry, Ms. Representative Benson, thank you for your work on this. Um, as some of you know, I spent my teenage years growing up in the country of Pakistan. And at the time, it was a military dictatorship. And you can be sure that nobody there got to vote for the guy who was in charge. As romantic as it sounds for us to parallel what's going on here with what's going on in Egypt or other um, similar places with governments propped up by our government, uh, these are apples and oranges. And I, I challenge all of us. I think when I knocked on doors, I was hearing about jobs. I was hearing about you know, health care. I was hearing about how can we protect you know, our most vulnerable neighbors uh, when, when we're going to have to cut things, cut important state services. And I think this bill is really fear-mongering and a distraction from what we were probably all elected to do. And I'd li really like to get back to work on some of those other bigger issues, rather than these 38 votes that we keep discussing. <laughs> Thank you. OK, that uh, takes care of the list of uh, members that had wished to raise questions. We will now start uh, working our way down the list of folks who have asked to come forward and speak either for or against uh, the bill. And <clears throat> we would ask uh, uh, the folks who are, are coming down uh, to indicate at the outset if you're speaking in favor or against the bill. And uh, we, have, uh, we have some signs here, uh, two minutes per person. And we have a one minute uh, warning and then a stop sign. So, yeah. And, uh, uh, we have first, uh, and I understand they're coming down together, Joe Mansky, Tom Ferber, and Kent Sulem. <laughs> 